Marvin Harrison Jr. is not only regarded as one of the best players in the 2024 NFL Draft, but he's also widely regarded as one of the greatest prospects of all time. Obviously, that's high praise, but many think that it's justified given the historic career that he had at Ohio State and the elite traits that he showed on film. But is he really that good? Is he truly an all-time great prospect worthy of being considered with the first overall pick, or is he just a good player that won't quite live up to the hype? Today, we'll be taking a look at Harrison and analyzing what positives and negatives he has in his game heading into the NFL. Anyone who follows college football even a little bit knows why Marvin Harrison Jr. has gotten so much hype over the past few years. He committed to Ohio State as a four-star recruit coming out of high school, and he's the son of Marvin Harrison Sr., who had a Hall of Fame career as a wide receiver in the NFL, playing with Peyton Manning on the Colts. That NFL bloodline gave people high hopes for him, and he more than delivered, having nearly 2,500 combined receiving yards and 29 total touchdowns over the past two seasons. He won the Blitnikoff Award this year for being the nation's best wide receiver and even finished as a Heisman finalist, although he didn't end up winning. So, to put it simply, he's had an insanely productive college career, but now we'll have to dive into the positives that he shows on tape to see how well it'll translate into the NFL. When watching his tape, two things seem to stick out, his size and his athleticism. And the special thing about him is how well they work together. He stands at six foot four, 205 pounds, which for reference is very similar to players like Christian Watson and AJ Green. Even with that size, he supposedly expects to run in the four threes in the 40 yard dash and has reportedly hit a top speed of 22.2 miles per hour, which is absolutely elite to NFL standards. He's also reported to have a max bench of 380 pounds and did 20 reps at 225 pounds, all while having a max squat of 500 pounds. All of this strength and athleticism is quite obvious on tape. Beyond just raw athletic ability, he's actually quite refined in his technique. He's a very good route runner, and he's able to get open consistently with sharp cuts and good instincts in finding the soft spot in zone coverage. He knows how to leverage a defender to make him go where he wants him to go so that he can beat him to the ball. The strength that he possesses comes in handy quite often. Teams have tried to run all sorts of press coverage on him, and while that's commonly a weak spot for younger receivers, Harrison has already learned to beat it consistently. He has a deep bag of release moves and rarely lets physicality throw him off his routes at all. Not only is he good prior to the ball being thrown, but he's absolutely elite when the ball is in the air. A throw that would be considered a 50-50 ball for most receivers is more of a 70-30 ball for Harrison. He has great concentration and ball tracking ability, and his body control and just spatial awareness is elite and allows for him to make some insane catches that most other receivers are simply not capable of making. He also has strong hands, long arms, and a high vertical, which allows him to high point the ball well and make catches over defenders and fight through contact at the catch point. And speaking of hands, his are very reliable. He rarely drops passes, and when he does, they're more of concentration drops rather than a problem with his hands or his technique. When you combine all of this, it's easy to see why he's been so dominant in college. He's a good enough route runner to win on short and intermediate routes. He's fast and has enough burst to win downfield. He can come down with some insane circus catches thanks to his body control, concentration, and strength. And he isn't slowed down by any sort of physicality or press coverage. Simply put, he is really, really good. But does that mean that he's a perfect prospect? Is he guaranteed to be a great player in the NFL? Or are there some flaws to his game that could ultimately hinder him? To find out, we'll need to dive into the negative side of his game. The negatives for Harrison are few and far between, but there are a couple of things that are worth noting on his draft profile. First, he could stand to put on a few more pounds. He's big enough to get by right now, but he should really try to fill out his frame a bit more to get ready for the increased physicality in the NFL. For reference, he's about 10 pounds lighter than someone like Romo Dunze, so I think that it would be better for him to try to pack on a bit more mass before competing at the next level. In terms of his on the field play, There was just one thing that felt lacking to me, his ability after the catch. Now, don't get me wrong. He's more than capable of taking a catch to the house when there's green grass in front of him, but he goes down on first contact quite often and doesn't seem to break many tackles. 
He also doesn't pull out many effective lateral jukes and just overall seems to lack creativity in the open field and doesn't have the natural aggressiveness to fight for additional yards. That's going to limit how effective he can be on screens, jet sweeps, dump offs, and other short yardage passes as compared to someone like Malik Neighbors, who's able to break off one for a touchdown anytime he touches the ball. The last thing I'll bring up is that he's not quite as versatile as some of the other players in this class. I'll admit I'm nitpicking a bit here, but he's just not going to turn into somebody like a Debo Samuel that you can use all over the field as a Swiss Army knife. He's just a normal, traditional receiver and won't be very effective in other positions or on special teams. Luckily, he won't have to be to be a great player in the NFL. Marvin Harrison Jr. may very well be the best college prospect that I have ever scouted. He just simply has everything you're looking for in a generational wide receiver, like great athleticism and strength, the ability to get off of press coverage, refined route running, high IQ, good contested catch ability, a proven track record of success, and a Hall of Fame NFL bloodline. With all of that, I see no possible way that he's a complete bust outside of some very unfortunate injury luck. Obviously, that's all really good, but he's not quite a perfect prospect yet. He's not elite after the catch, he could stand to add some more mass to his frame, and he isn't as versatile as you'd hope in the modern NFL. If he can manage to improve on all of those issues at the next level, there's no reason that he couldn't go on to be one of the most talented receivers that the game has ever seen. He grades out as my number one overall player in the 2024 NFL Draft. This is a good class, but he has the least flaws out of anyone I've scouted, and I truly believe that he's a generational talent. I would not think it's crazy in the slightest if someone took him first overall, and in fact, I think he's the safest pick on the board as well. Regardless of where he lands, I'm sure that he's going to continue to dominate, and I look forward to watching his pursuit of greatness continue in the NFL for years to come. Thanks for watching this video. If you like content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss a new release. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, goodbye.